You're listening to Change Your POV Podcast, episode 29. Businesses, I like 99.9% of them, require a lot of hard work, a lot of determination, and there are always a learning experience. Yep. And that Absolutely. you have to look at it long term. You can't look at it like, you know, I mean, you you got to realize that most businesses, the first, is it five years, three years or five years, will so not this, make a profit. Yeah. So the, the statistic is better than 90% of businesses will fail in the first year. Right. Welcome to Change Your POV Podcast, helping you navigate transitions in your life like entering and exiting college or the military, changing jobs or careers, and providing you with the coaching and mentorship needed to help you advance in your personal or professional life. Sometimes all you need is to change your point of view. Now, here's your host, Eddie Lazary. All right, folks, welcome back to Change Your POV Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Lazary. I'm on with Bennett Tatton. This is the conclusion of a two-part series uh, entitled Understanding the Business Part of Business. If you missed the first part, uh, head on over to changeyourpov.com forward slash episode 28, or you can go on iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM, any other podcast aggregator, and you can look for episode 28. That is the first part of this two-part series. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the conclusion of this episode. I had a great time uh, with Bennett discussing the business side of business. And if that sounds a little confusing to you, don't worry. Head on over to episode 28. Check out the first part. Uh, it's a very funny story. It's a personal story of about me uh, and my entrepreneurship as a business owner owning a landscaping business. And then uh, come back and check out the, uh, the conclusion uh, of this episode. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get back to this discussion already in progress. And it's a lot of work, man. It's not all, I mean... The, the the unsexy shit is is in is all the back end office rainbows stuff. and fucking unicorns. No, 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 it isn't. It's a lot of work. And so if you're gonna go if you're gonna do this, and I don't care what business it is you're you're gonna you're gonna be in. So I kind of made a list. Now I don't know what you came up with. We can go through anything that you've come up with, but I kind of have just a brief short list of just some business acumen things that you might probably want to take into consideration. Um, as you start looking at developing your business plan, uh, uh, if you're interested in starting a business, whether you're in the military currently looking to get out and start your own thing, or perhaps you're already out and you've got a nine to fiver and you're looking to start up something on the side. Go ahead, man. All right. So the first thing you need to do is understand what kind of business you're going to be in. Um, so there's different types of entities that you can create your business under. There's a corporation. There's called an LLC or limited liability corporation. Um, so there's a lot of different types of constructs of a business you can set up. And all that means is you're registering that business with your state. Um, and, and it's to get so, for example, in order to pay taxes on something um, or in order to get taxes paid out, you use your right now you use your Social Security number, right? Well, a business, so if you go and work at a, 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 a corporate office somewhere, uh, you're going to fill out your W, your um, your I-9 forms, right? Your, your, um, w-4. your w, W-4s. And on there is going to have where you're going to have to put in your Social Security number. That's so Uncle Sam knows how to, how to reclaim taxes from you. Well, your, your company or your business also pays taxes. So your company is, is like a human being. So consider your company is like its own entity. It exists on its own, stands on its own. And for that reason, it also gets taxed on its own. So it, the point of creating your own uh, entity and, and registering it with the state is you're going to get what's called an EIN number. It's basically a business uh, equivalent of a Social Security number. Your EIN number, it's employment identification number, I think is what it stands for. employer, but anyway, yeah. employer. Right. And so it's that number, it's that EIN number that you use to then um, 
populate all of your tax forms at the end of the year, but it also is what you use if you want to go set up uh, a company bank account. Like if you're going to go, um, like if you want to go get a checking account or a savings account under your name, you can because you are your own entity with your social security number. But you can't just walk in and be like, yeah, I'd like to open up a, a bank account because I started my own business. Uh, and they're going to say, okay, great. What is your EIN number? Because it has to have its own entity. So something to think about. So it's creating your own company and registering with the state and, and figuring out, and I'm not going to get into the specifics between the differences of a corporation versus an LLC or anything like that. You can you can look that up. If you don't know, again, that's what this is about, is just to identify some things you probably want to go and become a little bit more educated. He's got to cover all the jurisdictions that cover yeah. the area. So EIN and, and tax stuff is usually all federal and right. or state and or right. state. And, right. And part of setting up that company is uh, you have to get your company name registered. And what they do is they go through that you pick a name, right? For example, uh, my company, my landscaping company's uh, name was Recon 4. And so... What they do is they go and they look, is there any other landscaping companies out there in this area that has that same name or similar name? And if so, I couldn't use that. I'd have to pick another one. So that's another reason why you go get uh, your your name registered is so there's no conflict uh, in terms of infringing on um, other trademarks and things and, like and that. And usually do that at your county clerk. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, it may be different. I didn't get into those specifics because I don't know. That may vary state to state. Yeah, I don't know. For the most part. But yeah. I mean, you just go to your state um, uh, labor office website and uh, there'll probably be some information on there. Or just Google. Um, how to start you know, a business in. How to start a state. business in whatever state. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so that's a big part of it. And then the other. And so that's kind of starting the business. And then you have to kind of understand and this kind of goes back to my story is what what do you need in terms of tools or that's called any tools that you you need uh, whether it be a vehicle or um, you know in my case I had lawnmowers and things like that in a in business those things are called capital assets well, but even so, before that you need to figure out what kind of liability your business is going to have so if you yeah before you start buying equipment and everything else you got to look into insurance. Yes, and so for my uh, my insurance, I had to carry uh, a million dollar um, like and, a million and, dollar umbrella policy. Yes, however, <clears throat> I kind of game the system because that million dollar uh, umbrella policy only covered cutting grass. Right. Now, <laughs> if I if, Not <laughs> felling trees, <laughs> no, no. If I if I were to get into those other aspects of business, I. I should have gone in and contacted my insurance company and said, oh, by the way, I'm also uh, doing paver walkways, retaining wells, right. irrigation, dropping trees, and, and grind, grinding stumps. Uh, my insurance obligation uh, requirement would increase significantly, especially with dropping trees. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, so uh, again, you just have to be aware of what your business is and what liabilities your business may have. Um, if you've got pieces of machinery or anything like that that you need to start your business, you know, there's going to be some, um, you've got to be OSHA compliant, right? Because you're going to be subject to uh, state and federal, uh, any type of regulations, laws, um, things like that. Well, the other thing, too, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is that there is businesses where you don't need all this shit, too. That's true. So, Absolutely. So it's one of those things is you really have to search for what you like and want and what you're what you're willing to, um, you know, put out there and what right. you're really wanting to, like, be liable for, possibly. Sure. And any type of food, anything, oh any, God. any yeah. food is any out of control. Yeah. Anything consumable, right? And I'm talking, I don't care if you want to make suckers and sell them, right? Anything that somebody puts in their mouth uh, is considered consumable and it, and it has its own set of regulations. And, 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 and again, food. those are wildly different depending on the state and yep, even yep. and even some counties, um, mm. depending on where you're at. Because I like, for example, if you were to sell certain things that like uh, to make consumables to sell at the farmer's market. Right. Right. Like New York is pretty liberal about the way, what what you're able to make and sell. Right. 
Yep. Same yep. as with Florida. You don't even need a license to do it in Florida as long as you're under a certain cap, right? Right. But then right. go to someplace like Maryland, it's almost impossible. Mm-hmm. Or um, even where I live now, Delaware, you have to get all kinds of licensing. And this is just yep. to like sell freaking cupcakes. Yeah. You know? Yep. So it, it, it really does you know, matter where you live too. Yeah. And then the other, <clears throat> so we kind of covered like high, high risk jobs, like landscaping, then you got the consumable business and that could be food trucks, could be, you know, any number of things. And then the other one that's, that's really kind of sticky is anything that has to do with animals. So if you're going to open a pet store or you're going to have your own, you know, dog grooming business or anything that has to do with animals or pets in general, um, and, and of course, all of, everything we're saying is going to, there's going to be some different things that uh, are going to imp- imply in your business, depending on where, where you're from. But there's a whole nother set of potential rules, regulations, guidelines, restrictions, and things like that with regard to animals. Right. So um, just th- keep those. So high risk items, like crazy anything, in, anything food and anything animal related um, is, is going to be highly regulated, uh, highly regulated. Yes. And then, of course, and then there, there's the other type of business, and that is anything that's going to have a significant amount of uh, waste as a result of its production. So if you're in the business of doing, <clears throat> oh, I don't know, what's a good example? Um, you know, perhaps you're going to do, uh, what, I'm trying to think, anything that has to do with um, waste generation, EPA is going to be all over that. All so over. if you, oh like, yeah, like, like take one for example, and this kind of covers both food and, and waste is, uh, um, like beer, like making beer, things like that. You have a lot of spent yeah. grain, um, right. the yogurt production is the same way. The EPA is all over that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I got, there's a guy that I know that started his own, uh, carpet cleaning business. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, That's another one, especially with the, yeah, especially if they the, use chemicals and what. Yeah, the chemicals, oh, yeah. and he's got to have a special way to dispose of it. Right. Yeah, so yeah. any chemicals. That's what I was, that's what I was lo- searching for. Or like I have about. a, I have another buddy uh, who used to do like asbestos removal. Oh yeah, like yeah, that um, just nuts. Yeah. So the other thing, like like contracting or 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 construction, especially if you're yeah. doing remodeling where you're ripping stuff out got to know you know a lot of this stuff still there's like lead paint there's asbestos there's all kinds of craziness that slowly but surely is getting weeded out of the system but um it's there it's there and and that's all liability the other big liability industry is financial Mm -hmm. the financial industry has um uh, and and it's highly regulated obviously um especially since 2008 it's even more so the other thing, so now that we kind of understand a little bit about what our business is and some restrictions and liabilities that may come with it, so I'm going to go and do some research there. Um, then, then the other thing is, right, and it kind of goes hand in hand. Maybe it's maybe they're two separate entities, but they're they're very closely related, and that is marketing and your your target customer, your consumer base. Right. So you have to understand who your customer is, but you also have to understand who your customer is not and understanding where your customers live, um, how they shop, where they shop, what are they looking for. So you really have to get in the mind of your customer um, and you have to. And and in order to do in order to service that customer, once you figure that out, then you need a marketing strategy and a marketing strategy could be anything as simple as having a website. having some business phone numbers, some business email addresses, having a way for people to get a hold of you, leave a message. Um, and then that kind of rolls right into, and I kind of alluded to it when I was telling my story, is a point of sale system. So you have to have a method by which you collect payment from your customer. Now that could be, a, you know, they can go on and pay online. You can have a website that accepts some uh, different uh, forms of payment you Square, options. you got PayPal, you got Flint, you've got, Right, uh, right. You know, a, a numerous different things like that. You've got, uh, uh, you know, if you're a veteran-owned business, you can always go with First Data. Uh, yep. And uh, they they offer veterans pretty awesome deals. Um, so. Yeah. So accepting payment obviously is critical because you got to get paid. But what it also does is that you you have to have a way 
in which you provide an invoice or a receipt because those invoices and receipts you'll need to have on record come tax time uh, because Uncle Sam is going to want to know how much did you make versus how much do you owe me. Uh, and if you don't have a way to capture that, um, and this was a lesson learned hard for me my first year, uh, it's going to be very, very, very difficult. And you might think you're you're saving yourself uh, money on the front end, but by the time you get done with all your lawyer fees on the back end, you're probably not going to save a whole lot. So again, cutting corners may make may save time and money up front, but it's going to catch up with you, and you will be sucking on the back end. So don't cut corners if you don't. I mean, just don't cut corners. It's just not good. So um, that kind of really, I mean, we've covered a lot. We've talked about a lot. There's a lot to business. And again, it's definitely doable, but it really comes down to educating yourself and being, being aware, being aware of what you're doing and, and, um, you know, understanding the path of, of your company. Uh, also uh, understanding that most businesses, I like 99.9% of them require a lot of hard work, a lot of determination, and there are always a learning experience. Yep. And that Absolutely. you have to look at it long term. You can't look at it like you know, I mean, you you got to realize that most businesses the first is it 5 years, 3 years or 5 years <clears throat> will so not this- make a profit. Yeah, so the, the statistic is better than 90% of businesses will fail in the first year. Right. Um, and most businesses that do succeed won't turn a profit, like you said, within, you know, it's probably three to five years. I think. Three to five years. Yep. Yeah. So because, because all the money that you are making is being reinvested back into the company. Correct. Or at least it should be. If I you're am, just I pulling everything off the top. And, not, and, yeah, and exactly. Shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, so this was kind of a fun one, but I just want everybody to be cognizant of, um, owning your own business comes with that, that element on the side. And that is the business acumen that will be needed in order to, to be and remain, uh, successful, um, for years to come. And it's not um, impossible, but I didn't, I didn't know. And again, you don't know what you don't know. And I didn't know that I didn't know that shit until I got to the point where I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know what the this. fuck am I doing? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I mean, but, you but can... at the end of the day, I think, you know, all the information that you need to know is out there for you to find. I, it's not mm-hmm. hard, really. Right. Um, and there's so many different tools, so many different people that will help you along the path that don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, right. Find yourself a mentor before you even go down this road. Amen. You know, especially somebody, somebody has done that before. Right. Yeah. Especially, especially if you find people in your own, uh, you know, your own wheelhouse or where where you want to be. Um, and that's the other thing too is make sure that you pick something, or or to to start looking into if you really want to be in business, pick something that's actually gonna you know have a market. Uh, just because you think it's an awesome idea doesn't mean that it's marketable. Oh, hell yeah. Um, especially Amen. with products. Oh, my God. Yep. Especially with products. And yep. there's all, I mean, that that's a whole nother show or, or two. Um, <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, um, you know, this is, it's painful. Owning your own business is very painful, but totally worth it if, Absolutely. Very rewarding. Very rewarding. Yeah. Totally worth it. And um, I say that everyone should at least try it once mm-hmm. or, or more because you're going to fail. And that, that's, oh, yeah. that's just the bottom line. My first business was a nightmare as well. So, right. boom. That's it. That's all I have, really. Yeah. No, that's, that's all I wanted to cover. And I think the last thing is it's got to be it has to be something you're passionate about at the end of the day it, it can't be about making money i mean no. obviously at the end of the day it's about making money or making a living but if money is not enough it's just not and and most most entrepreneurs will hands down agree with that if yep. you're not if you're not passionate about what you're doing or you don't like what you're doing all the money in the world is not enough 
to yep. to to make you continue to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. So, kind of a different one this time, but that's all right. Any ideas for a name for this one, Bennett? I don't. I don't. All right. Um, I'll cut. But, but I'm pretty sure we can come up with one. Yeah, let's we'll come up with one. So, let me wrap it up, and then we can finish talking. So, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Change Your POV Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Lazary, with Bennett Tatton. And you can find all the show notes for this episode by heading over to changeyourpov.com. Never miss an episode. Hit subscribe on your podcast player of choice. Uh, you got iTunes, you got Player FM, got Stitcher, whatever you listen to. Just uh, subscribe so you don't miss anything. If you want to reach out to me directly, you can email me at eddie at changeyourpov.com. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Until next time. All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed that episode. And you're wondering, what the hell? It's only like 20 minutes into it, and we've got, you know, another 30 minutes or something left. What I did was, after this episode, Bennett and I, we stayed on, and we just kind of uh, kind of just talked back and forth, shot the shit a little bit, and I wanted to kind of give you a glimpse and kind of behind the curtain and get to know Bennett and I a little bit uh, differently from a different lens. So, um... I'm going to just let it play out. I'm not going to do any editing. Just get a chance to listen to kind of us talk back and forth. And you'll get to hear some army stories and whatnot. So, uh, again, this is a special episode. It goes outside our normal realm of kind of our uh, our normal flow. So, uh, anyway, yeah, hey, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Whatever. I just figure I'd throw it out there and uh, let you listen. All right, so uh, enjoy, and I will catch you uh, next week. Yeah. A little bit of a different one, but it's hey, good though. it's good. I like it. It's, a, it's a great story. Yeah. Oh, oh motherfuckers are always laughing their asses off at that. Because I know I was. Holy shit. That's fantastic. Uh, great story. And, and you know what? It was all true, man. You can't make that <laughs> no, shit you up. Can't. No, hell no. Uh, it's like a scene fuck. from like a Will Ferrell movie, dude. Oh, yeah. Well, you'll get to hear you'll get to hear it kind of again when I send you this, these files over because right. I I told that story to to Mike last night when we were oh, talking. Oh shit! Uh, so <laughs> real quick, here's a Bangalore story for you. So I told you I never I never supported the infantry until I went to Korea, <laughs> and, and I supported the uh, first of the five hundred six. Um, a lot. It was um, uh, air assault infantry, uh, but. I don't know why they called it. We only did one field problem where we actually were on helicopters. Right. The rest of the time, we were just humping everywhere. But it's, um, it's just like, yeah, it's like, why do they still call them the 101st Airborne? Yeah, right. Yeah. You know? Or or even <laughs> like 10th Mountain. Why the fuck do you call them Mountain? It's it's just it's from back in the day, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we did we did this field problem, right? And it was a it was like a light. We did a couple of field exercises, and and one of them was like a live fire kind of a you know, kind of a, a movement, a movement on the target kind of a thing, yeah. but it was all live fired shit, which was kind of cool. I've mean, never, never done anything like that before, um, before this, at this point. And, and we were kind of up on this overwatch position and the, the combat engineers, uh, were going down. There was actually some, some concertina wire strung up. I love those guys. So the engineers ran sappers. up and threw, yeah, sappers threw some Bangalores underneath the wire and, I, I, right, um, at the time thought that everything on TV was real. So, so my experience of Bangalore torpedoes existed all on television. And so I was convinced that that was going to be what it was. So I'm standing there like up on top of this hill, not too far away, like gazing down, like watching these guys and they throw the shit underneath there. They pull the, they pull the, uh, the igniter, the time fuse, yeah. and they, yeah, and they turn around, and they fucking run like their asses are on fire, right? And and they and they just keep on running. I mean, at the point where I would have just turned around and, and just waited for it to go off, like they were still fucking running, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> like and running and running. I'm like, "Wow, what the hell?" All of a sudden, I look down, this fucking thing goes off. Holy shit, man. My fucking ears are ringing, like I can feel the concussion blast. Yeah, man. I'm standing there like, "What the I look over and the tree that I'm standing next to has just got all kinds of concertina wire like st- sticking out of it. Shit. Awesome. Yeah, I I didn't get hit by a single piece. I don't know how the hell I didn't. Oh man, I love those things. They're freaking nuts. God. Well, I mean, they're just they're they're you know it's like they're a 
freaking shape charge yeah packed into this pipe basically packed full of explosives <laughs> to just tear shit up you know yeah oh man yep. they're awesome <laughs> yeah oh, yeah man so yeah we came up uh with some good ideas for the warrior hall today i think yeah about the way that we're gonna approach it from the from the get-go uh-huh. instead of getting too knee deep in the uh peer support realm right off the bat yeah i think it's gonna be more of just like a like a meetup group yep just to provide each other with more support right away than to actually try to like provide actual peer support does that make sense right yeah 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 so yeah get it get it off the ground and kind of get it get it started and then grow from there Right, and we're gonna do it in conjunction uh well hopefully do it in conjunction with the bunker bunker labs yeah so and they've got what 16 of those open 12 12 yeah yeah mike was saying they're gonna get to 16 or something like that they're gonna get to 16 shortly and i don't know you never know past that but yeah, I think right. I think what it is is they're using the the main offices that they're opening now as hubs, and yeah. then, so they might have like satellite stuff. So like if if you've got one in like uh, you know let's say use Raleigh for example, you might have a bunker Wilmington then like Wilmington North Carolina, yeah, or a yeah. bunker Jacksonville or a bunker Greensboro or something like that. Like you would have you know like like little satellite ones, but each bunker labs is its own independent 501c3 i mean it's not it's not independent in the fact that it you know they're all running under the same umbrella but they're yeah. each they each have their own executive director they each they're so they so it's like a it's like a franchise correct then. they they run yeah, okay. they're still running independently but they're still running all under the same uh uh I, technically they have different eins but they can yep. all run under the same 501c uh, paperwork. Like a parent company yes, kind of thing. Yes, yes. They can all run under the same thing. So they, so they, where kind do of they like get all... subcontract out is how they work it. So so they, they, they real, their bread and butter is like helping finance or, and, spear, and, and spearhead uh, – not not new companies, no, not launch they're, they're companies, in, but an incubator. So it's it's a or an accelerator. Accelerator, because, yeah. Because it's not an incubator, it's an accelerator. Because the thing is, is that every company that's there has already passed proof of concept. Yeah. So where do they get all this funding then to help these accelerations? It's all it's all freaking donations and you know money that they've raised or whatnot. You know, I mean, there's huh. there so. I mean, they, they do a lot of stuff, so, yeah, you know, but a lot of it's just knowledge because the executive directors are all multiple, you know, entrepreneurs. Right. Uh, right. have really been successful in that. So a lot of it's about education uh, and really can, you know, uh, getting together and really, it's like kind of like a huge mastermind. It's kind okay. of what it is. Um, except for they learn a lot more shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. They're learning the ins and outs of huh. know, from experts. Yeah. So speaking of masterminds, what do you do? You think we should just like collapse ours or move it to a different day or or something? I think like for me, last night I just got caught up with the freaking family. No, I think yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking though because Eric's never made one yet. Yeah, he hasn't made and, one yet. So maybe, Jay, maybe we should put it out there that because Sunday, I, maybe a weeknight would be better. I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. Because um, I think the problem you run into is that um, at least the guys that we have involved, um, like with Jay, Sundays a lot of times he's either got an interview or he's trying to yeah. get out an episode shit differently (laughs) it is what it is yeah yeah yeah. it's one of those things too so maybe we should just kind of put it out there and be like all right so since we're not really doing this very well let's kind of like try and reset and see what works better for people yeah nothing against you but if it turns out to be just me and you that shows up on sunday yeah like like i you know fuck that i mean you and i are already talking once a week right 
You know what I mean? Yeah. If we, sure. if it's just us on Sunday, well, I'll just throw up the the recording and we'll just yeah, do that's a fucking what I was episode. Say. Maybe we should record and work on something yeah. else. I don't know. I, you know what I mean? Some kind of like side project. Yeah. And I don't know what. I, I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. You know. So this, so this magazine you asked yeah, me what about. What the fuck is this, dude? That's that was pretty cool. I saw it and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. So I ended up interviewing. Um, it, it was I have I think it was interview I think it was episode ten I ended up interviewing Doctor Rob Garcia mm-hmm. he's he's an Air Force Air Force enlisted but he's got a he got his PhD yeah and um, he's already got his um, he's got his own business uh, it's called Blue Dragon Enterprises okay. um, so he's he's like in really good with a lot of really, really talented people all over the place. And um, after I interviewed him, we kind of stayed in, in contact and stayed in communication. And there was a guy that he knew really well named Chris Ripka, who I invited to our mastermind group. And uh, yeah, you met him, Chris. And uh, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He's a little. So, so doc, uh, doc Garcia, he he kind of hand like hand selected and invited like twelve contributors to be part of this new magazine called Shift. Yeah, I saw. And all of those people have different backgrounds. Some of them are like like full time like radio producers. Uh, some do like I mean it's just this this grab bag of different talent right. uh, and experiences and. He he. So he's created his magazine shift, and basically each of us submit an article a month, and we target the article in such a way that it's basically a premier life coach type of magazine gotcha. where we're where we're uh, targeting uh, people that are interested in life coaching and people that are interested in like life hacks and being coached and that kind of thing, and so we're basically we're each kind of writing. For this magazine, using our own experiences and skill sets, and and shedding light on different aspects from our own angle, basically, and submitting it into this magazine. So, so yeah, so I was invited to be part of this, and this wasn't on my radar. Yeah, like, you're like you know oh, what I mean? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I got all my other shit on my, you know, going on, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pass this up. You oh, know what I mean? Right. If, if, even if it fails, if nothing else, and I'll have, you know, 11 other people that I can, you know, network with and help build something off of. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. But if nothing else, um, I can add that to my repertoire of, of shit that I can promote on my side anyway. Yeah, man. And, uh, I don't know. And, and you know, if I have an opportunity to interview any of these guys and I have an up, op- you know, and I get a chance to talk with them. I'm definitely going to kick them over the cigars and sea stories way yeah, too, you know, fucking a. it's all about helping each other it out. Is, That's it. It is, it is. Yep. So you interviewed Jay. How'd that go? It, it actually was a pretty good interview. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was good. I mean, like Penny and him went to freaking SOI together and like they, know, Oh, they know yeah, each they other. Know huh? Some of the same people and, Huh. I mean, they went to SOI together and then never saw each other again, you know. But, you know, huh. at the end of the day. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and, you know, Jay's a sharp dude. Yeah, he is. He just, uh, you know. Yeah. So it was it was good. Nice. When's that one coming out? I don't know if it's tomorrow or if it's... T- I think it's next Tuesday. Uh, which is nowhere near enough. Yeah, see, well, I'm running into the exact opposite problem. Like, aside from you and I's banter episodes, I'm talking about just a regular interview. Yeah. Like, I've got enough interviews to get me to probably the middle of April. Well, there you go, man. That's awesome. Well, it is, but it isn't. I mean, it is because, I mean, it's awesome for me. But what's not awesome is these people that I'm interviewing, they're like, so when's it going to go live? And I'm like, yeah, like April 15th. And they're like, what? They're like, are you serious? I'm like, I, I have this huge backlog. And so now and now I got some people that are like are kind of put off by the fact that they've got to wait for three months <laughs> before the shit comes out. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know. So I, uh, I'm just, 
ah, oh, man, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's rough. Know. That is rough. I do. I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop having interviews because I like having that ability to, you know, right. to see out in the future and not have to worry about it. But obviously, those that's raw material. I only edit probably the next week's worth, you know, a week ahead of time. Right. But you know, I've got enough in the can, like to get, like I said, almost the end of April. Yeah. That's... And I've got more. And I've got more coming. I've got like fucking three more interviews I'm doing this week. I'm like, holy shit. So, I don't know. Yeah. Don't have to figure that out. Yeah, we're going to be interviewing Eric here soon, too, as well. Oh, good. I think yeah, I'm going to get him on eventually. Saturday. I can kind of tone it down a little bit, but uh, I don't like to. And I yeah. usually don't because it's just me. I fucking swear. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't around, like, kids and old people and, like, my mom and, you know, stuff like that. But right. on, on here, psh, come on. <laughs> this is how we talk, dude. This is who yeah, we are, yeah. and, I, and, I, and that's that's my thing. That's how I'm gonna be. Is I'm gonna be me. I don't care what you, you know what I mean. Yeah, I got up yeah. in front of like last night. Uh, I have a, I'm in a public speaking class right now for yeah. for school, um, and I got up and gave a speech. You know, like a thing last night. And my thing is, is I like to tell stories. So I'll get right. up there and I'll just tell. So I'm not giving a speech. I'm going right. to get up there and I'm going to talk like I do, like I'm on the radio or whatever. And I'm going to tell them a story. Uh, and I swore multiple times. Yeah. My teacher just yeah. thought it was great. <laughs> you know, she's like, people yeah. are so nervous. I'm like, I trust me. I'm not. <laughs> nervous. And I could get up in front of a thousand people just as easily as I could up in front of two. Right. Um, I mean, it wasn't always like that, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You're just trying to convey a message. Sure. Regardless. See, that's the thing. People always, people need to realize that the shortcomings and the issues that they have getting up on a stage and presenting in front of people are their shortcomings and issues. People don't see them. Right. Exactly. Yep. Because you could get up and nine out of 10 people will get up and give a presentation in front of a class and you can't tell, like they're scared to death on the inside. They're nervous, yep. they're jittery, they're this, that, and the other thing. But you can't tell sitting in, in the class. Right, right. Not at nope. all. Nope. You know, and that's what it's all about. So as soon as you realize that, it makes getting up in front of a, ton of people a lot easier mm -hmm, absolutely like i'm really looking into t trying to figure out a way to speak at a ted conference yeah i mean that was that's one of my goals in this whole endeavor is to do public speaking and i'm looking at uh, ted x raleigh right now um yeah it's gonna happen sooner or later I mean, how do you even, do you have to audition for that? Well, no, you, that can, you can either, people can nominate you or you can apply oh, okay. to a lot of them. So like if you apply, um, and it's basically, you know, have a, having an idea worth spreading. Yeah. Um, so pres let's see, present your selection criteria before submitting the application below to present for TEDx Raleigh. You should review and pay very careful attention to presenter selection criteria. All presenters must agree to the criteria, blah, blah. What is the selection criteria? There it is. Let's look. Let's freaking read about it. Let's answer your question right now. Who are we looking for? We are interested in all types of pres presentations from speakers to artists to performers and much more. We're looking for people with a unique idea we're spreading and an incredible, awe-inspiring message. Basically, I was thinking about getting up and talking about Warrior Hall mm -hmm. and, you know, that type of thing. So the theme is wonderlust. Pre Wonder. Presentations do not need to be speeches, but rather talks. Performance art, vocal stylings of any sort. We are looking for a diverse group to stimulate our audience, blah, blah, blah. What does wonderless mean to us? Wonderless involves being in a constant state of wonder, meant, and awe. It conveys feelings of curiosity, passion, excitement, and motivation. What does it mean to you? So what will a thoughtful submission include? 
We're looking for ideas we're spreading. TEDx Raleigh pres presentations should stand out among others of similar topics. Think differently or sharing feelings of wonderlust. Hmm. Selection process and timeline. So this one, you've got to have your application in by the 25th of mm. January. How many presenters will be selected is we expect a huge response. So we will select 15 or fewer. Wow. Be sure that your submission stands out. So, so preparation, it talks about the preparation. It says talks are under 18 minutes, preferably 14 to 16. <sighs> Yeah, and that's all it says. I mean, it doesn't have like, you know, questions to ask yourself. Can you articulate your idea or concept in one sentence? Why is it an idea we're spreading? And what makes your idea unique? Aren't there already hundreds of other presenters discussing the same issue? What is your call to action? You know. Mm, yeah. So I guess, yeah. That's right, so, and where's so, that at? This is in Raleigh. So application, the application requirements include a presentation title, a draft speech outline with learning outcomes, takeaways, a sample video, a description of how your presentation is an idea worth spreading, and explanation of how to how the talk applies to TEDx Raleigh Wonderlust theme and several other items prepared now to have their materials ready for the successful submission. No presenter will be selected if they have not submitted the requested application material. So huh. there you go. But I mean, they're all over the freaking country. Yeah. Huh? I mean, everywhere. I I'll mean, go there's, check them out. There's, they're, they're in all kinds of places, man. Like Salisbury, Maryland. There's one there on the 30th, which is uh, not that far from me which is this Saturday. It's this, you know, next Saturday. Yeah. Um, so there's one there and that's like, dude, town of like 12,000 people. Huh. So who knows? Wow. So yeah, that's crazy. Sooner or later, I'm going to be doing that shit. Oh yeah. Why not? Right. Yeah. So that's cool, man. <laughs> yep. So, all right, brother. We will talk. Well, good talk, man. I, I always look forward to our Wednesday evening discussions. Right. It's definitely cool. Yeah. And uh, I really liked having Tim on last week. Yeah, it was good. He's he's a sharp dude, man. He, yeah. And yeah, and that's what's so weird about the Cigars and Sea Stories crew is like all of you are so like different. And I think that's and what that's makes the, the show so part interesting. Of the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I listen to Sebastian and he just sounds like a, like, like a Joe, like a boot. You know what I mean? Right. Like yeah. he still has that, like, like, I don't really like, like Tim will say something prophetic and Sebastian be like, dude, it just fucking went right over my head, but I don't give a shit because I'm, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm drinking a beer and just enjoying life. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's <laughs> so there's that weird dynamic, and that was one of the questions that you'll hear it when I send you these audio files that I asked. I I asked Mike because after talking to him for almost three hours last night, I'm like, you know, I said I have a different perspective about you now that I had a chance to really talk with you a little bit more in depth than than the impression that I get of you listening to you on cigars and sea stories. I said cigars and sea stories, you you come across as just this real charismatic kind of carefree you know free balling you know marine corps dude running around in his silk he's just having a good time right. and i said but i'm talking to you now and you've got a lot of passion and a lot of uh interests and a lot of uh, not that you haven't conveyed that on cigars and seas but i'm just saying um you know it's a very different kind of like he's he's far more like just talking to him he was far more uh, intellectual and academic and uh, business oriented on our conversation than he is like on cigars and seas. So, and and I told him I was like, you know, do you foresee cigars and sea stories ever trans? And I told him I'll just be straight up with you as as a third party listener listening in on cigars and sea stories. I told him the analogy of the three E's, right? The 
uh, every podcast needs to be entertaining or educational or empowering. If you could be all three at, at the same time, then that's golden. It's a bit, as long as you have one of those three E's, that's going to bring your listeners back you know, week after week. And I say, for me, Cigars and Sea Stories, the, the really honest to God E that you guys hit every episode is the entertaining. I said, I listen to Cigars and Sea Stories because it's entertaining. Not because I see any educational value in it. Not that there isn't, but that's not what I see. Right, right. Uh, and, and it's not really empowering, although there are times that there may be some empowerment elements to it. I said, but at the end of the day, Cigars and Sea Stories for me is about entertainment. It's, it's entertaining. I listen to it on the way home. I laugh my ass off. I walk in the door, and I'm good to go. And I say, D- do you ever see Cigars and Sea Stories getting to the point where it transitions away from less of the entertainment and more into the educational empowerment because what I'm after three hours of talking to him last night, it was far more educational empowerment than it was entertaining. And uh, he's like, no, I think that cigars and sea stories is really what it is. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of our, uh, it's kind of our outlet. Yeah. Yeah. And and what what we're kind of trying to do is that was kind of the idea is to get out there with the entertainment side of it. Yeah. um, With sprinkles of, um, education and, and empowerment. Right. But right. Um, at the end of the day, I think that we're going to have other projects that are kind of like attached. Yeah. He was telling me about the, and the yeah, he was telling me about the, uh, the, 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 like the YouTube training videos and yeah. some, so he was so, you and know, like the five paragraph business plan is part of that. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. No, that's cool, man. Yeah. I mean, you guys have a you guys have a direction and a vision in your in your tackle, it, man. That's good. I'm trying, right? Really trying to get like more of our blog presence going. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have phases. I mean, and that's what you guys have the advantage because you've got four yes contributors within that element, correct? That you guys can divide and conquer. And, and, and really, at the end of the day, two to four guys is where it's at. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes four is almost too much. Yeah. But it depends. And and I think that we do it cool nicely because we're not necessarily on every episode. Right. No. Which is yeah, kind of for cool. sure. Uh, you know, the only person that's been on every episode I think is Mike. Yeah. And Sebastian probably. But Sebastian doesn't talk that much anyway. So No, he doesn't. Like the last episode it, I think you did the intro and you're like Mike Bennett and Sebastian sit down and talk like Sebastian. The first word he said was like 10 minutes before the episode was over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Holy shit. This is how. It... Yeah, man. All right, man. So it's, it's nice to be your wingman. So at least half the time you have two guys. Yeah. Yeah. No shit. So yeah, man. Pretty cool. Stuff. I appreciate yeah, it. Man. Yeah. So if, uh, you know, who knows, we'll see, we'll see what, We'll see what it evolves into. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I it's think, just, I mean, I'm more a... exposure out there for both of us. And, uh, right. I kind of look at it like, uh, you know, it's just more fun. It's fun. So that's yeah, it, it is. That's it. It's fun. And it gets like, it gives me, you know, because like, like Jay, he and I have basically kind of started at the same time, Yeah. but he's like on episode nine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or seven or eight or something like that. Like I'm pushing out, you know, episode 19, 20 here pretty soon. So it's like, right. you know, doing that two shows a week, it's a lot of work, but it's, it gets it's worth it. Too. <laughs> it is. It's, you know, I figure in a couple of months I'm pushing the 60, 70, you know, I'll be getting up there by the end of the yeah, year. Like for sick for us, it was six months basically. And we have 50 right. something odd episodes now, you know? Right. Right. So we're like we're like at our six month mark right now. Nice. So and that's the only way to increase, you know, the listenership and get sponsors. It just it's about exposure and exposure and time. The, time, yep. And the more episodes I put out there, you know what I mean? The I more... think there's a lot of guys getting into it, but I don't think a lot of them have staying power. Right. So Yeah, I agree. It's a matter of I know we're not going anywhere. Um, and I'm pretty sure you're not going anywhere. Yeah, no. it's just too had much too much fun. investment. Yeah, now. It's it fun is too. So it's... Yeah, it's fun as hell. And 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 the thing about it is, is is the more we do, the more episodes I do, 
like the the, the better I get, and the better I get, the less editing I have to do, yeah. and the less editing, hey. like the less time it takes. So it's just you know, it's all about streamlining and making the processes more efficient. Absolutely. Cool. All right, brother. All right, have Stay a good one. Tight. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Right. Peace. Thanks for listening to Change Your POV Podcast with Eddie Lazary. Check out more content by going to changeyourpov.com. And remember, your ability and willingness to change your point of view will open doors of opportunity.